This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, top of the day to everybody. Once again, it's a great day in the summer here in my home base of Colorado. And we're going to be focusing on a topic that is absolutely critical, critical, essential. You, you should not leave home without it. And it's everything that the folks at Bowker create and myidentifiers.com as well, because we're talking about the ISBN and we're talking about other variables of what the Bowker empire creates and does for authors. So with me today is... Laura Dawson, who is uh, involved with all the the marketing side of it, the information side of it, the uh, she's one of the product managers there for identifiers at Bowker, and a lot of authors actually don't even know what myidentifiers.com is. And you'll when when you learn about this, you're going to think, oh, where was this when I first started down? this whole road of publishing. So with that, Laura, welcome to Author You, your guide to book publishing. Thank you. Judith, it's a pleasure to be here. Well, I am so glad to, to have you here. And I know that, that you've got a long pedigree. I mean, you've worked with a lot of big companies, for, for example, like Barnes & Noble, uh, Doubleday. Mm-hmm. So you really do understand what's going on in publishing. And you've also been involved with some of the, the uh, development of higher education for McGraw-Hill, as well as involved with the book, uh, the, the book industry study group. So maybe we can touch on base and let our listeners know what that is all about, because that's one group that I'm certainly interested in. Um, oh, and sure. Going on. So let's jump into just ISBNs <laughs> right <Okay>. away. <laughs> let's, just, let's just go down that route very quickly. Um, okay. and, and get into wh- what they are, um, mm-hmm. when should they be using them, how, how do they work and help with the discovery, et cetera, et cetera. Um, ISBN stands for International Standard Book Number, and it's a number that um, was developed in the 1970s just as um, publishing and retailing warehouses were beginning to get digitized. So publishers and retailers and distributors were starting to communicate um, electronically about the, their stock, their books, when to expect them, how many were in a carton, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> having an ISBN attached to a book um, guaranteed that the recipient of that information would know beyond any, any doubt whatsoever that the book is a hardcover or a paperback or, um, you know, that that it's a large print edition, each ISBN um, gets assigned to a separate format of a book. So that way you can't uh, confuse um, two different titles. It's just a way of identifying unambiguously a book and and distinguishing it from all the other books. So and ISBNs are... Sorry? No, go, I was going to say, they, they used to be just 10 digits in the old days, and then that transition missed several years ago to the 13 digit, which for book publishing is, starts with 978. Um, and, and I'm curious of that when you're, because I, I know that some people still are throwing out the 10 digit ISBN. Is that just a waste of time? Um, not entirely. Um, if um, if you were issued a, a, a block of ISBNs back in the days when it was just 10 digits long, they can be converted to 13 digits fairly easily, and there's a formula on Bowker.com that uh, allows you to do that. Um, however, if your ISBNs um, have recently been issued, and they will be 13 digits, if those 13 digits start with 979, you cannot reverse convert them to a 10-digit. 
it's the only asset, the 978 yeah. prefix that can be, um, you know, retroactively converted back to 10 digits. So um, the blocks that I, well, we have actually, because we bought 100 a long time ago, but we had the mm -hmm. old, you know, for our, for our publishing company, Mile High Press. So we have, we convert each one over. So, mm -hmm. it, so my, you just said something that um, didn't compute for me. So you, that 978 is what I'm used to for book. You just said right, 979. Right. Tell me the difference yes. between 978 and 979. Um, it's just a question of volume. So far, we have not seen very many ISBNs in the wild with a 979 prefix. Um, my understanding is that there are some um, being assigned in Europe, um, but in the U.S., nobody has run out of the 978 ISBNs yet. Okay, so it's it's for the, it's for the overflow. So let's say that I had yeah. I bought a hundred. Let's say I was a very active uh, small press publisher, and guess what? I need more. So if I go in for more, am I going to get the, a 978 series, or are you going to throw me into the 979? Um, at the moment, as I said, we have not run out of the 978 yet, so um, they will continue okay. to be 978. Um, but we're anticipating, you know, in a few years, um, we're going to start seeing some 979 going through the supply chain. Great. All right. So it's just a continuation. It, it's like it's like why we no, need no more prefaces for our phone numbers and things. Right. 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 Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And All it's, right. It's really just as as with area codes anymore. It's really difficult um, to tell, um, you know, to, to match an area code to a specific geographic location. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's increasingly helpful to regard the ISBN as just a dumb number where the, the digits don't actually have any semantic meaning in them. Um, because if you if you start, you know, assigning meaning to the prefixes and, you know, the various components of the ISBN, um, chances are the, the market um, has evolved so that what you think the number means, it doesn't actually mean anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there, there we have it. But, but the, let me just ask you, um, I, I know that I, I, when I do book shepherding and we're mm -hmm. into the final runs of it and uh, one of the checkpoints is we go through the copyright page and all that and we're making, we're writing the back cover copy for the book um, before she goes to print and we're, not only are we making sure the ISBN is there, but we're putting on our copyright pages all the copyrights or the all all the ISBNs for all the editions all in the same cup. So if it's if it's a, if it's a hardback, it's going to have that it on there. Mm -hmm. If there is a uh, a paper, um, it will be on there. Mm -hmm. If there is an E, we will put mm -hmm. that on there. And I'm aware that not all all animals uh, require Amazon does not require an ISBN if you do an ebook in their whole arena there. But others do. So, do you have any recommendations that they should go ahead and apply an ISBN for an ebook, even though they don't need it on Amazon? Um, yeah, I mean, you're not hopefully going to be limiting your sales to Amazon. I mean, it depends on on what type of publishing you're doing. Um, but if you're looking at um, selling your your ebook into other outlets, um, some of those outlets do require an ISBN. So, um, it's it's probably worth it um, just to cover your bases. Uh, right. Additionally, you know, we're seeing um, some self-published authors are, are becoming a little bit disaffected with Amazon and um, would like to, you know, um, take their, their books to other retailers. So um, Amazon's not the be-all and the end-all. No, I mean, certainly for eBooks, Amazon does control, I mean, they do own most of the real estate for pushing out roughly 70% in North America. Mm -hmm. But there mm -hmm. is Kobo, there is Barnes & Noble, there are um, Smashwords, there are a variety of other, there's almost a dozen really solid platforms you should consider if you're not exclusively with Amazon. So, so summing up for everybody, it's a good idea to go ahead and have one. Um, and make sure that you use it and take it that way. All right. So uh, for for um, strategies, and it, you also mentioned that there's something called the the ISNIs, which mm -hmm. is something new. I'm not familiar with it. So educate me and the rest of us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, the ISNI is another standard like the ISBN. Um, it is new. It was published in 2012. 
It's an ISO standard, uh, and it stands for International Standard Name Identifier. And so this is this is a number that gets assigned to contributor names. Um, <clears throat> so uh, it's a way of disambiguating two authors who have the same name. Um, it's a way of making sure that all of the titles by an author are collected in one place regardless of how that author's name is rendered. So, for example, you've got somebody like Dostoevsky um, in... Our alphabet, we can spell his name any one of a number of ways. Um, so he, mm-hmm. his name is not consistently spelled from book to book. Um, so uh, assigning a number to that identity means that regardless of, of how his name is rendered, whether it's rendered in, in Russian, you know, in Cyrillic characters or in Latin characters, um, he, he can be unambiguously identified. So it's a very helpful identifier. It doesn't apply just to authors. It also applies to publishers. It applies to um, musicians, actors, anybody who contributes to or is the subject of any kind of intellectual property. So where would... I, I, I'm totally, I'm not clear yet that, is mm-hmm. this something the publisher pulls down? Is this something the author pulls down? Is this the illustrator? And where do we put these numbers? And if you have so many, I'm going to throw a bunch of questions at you all at once. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, sure. and, and you know, we have about two minutes before our first break, but but do they, so we could overlap here is what I'm saying, but do, okay. do, do we uh, put in a bunch of oddball spellings of our names if we get them? Back to you. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, well, let's let's, um, let's start with um, the. It, it is not yet being used by most publishers because it is so new. They have to go and reconfigure their system. But a lot of publishers are starting to look at this as a way to do effective royalty tracking, for example, making mm-hmm. sure that the correct author gets the correct payment. Mm-hmm. Um, Barnes & Noble is looking at it as um, a disambiguation tool for search. Google is looking at it um, for the same reason. So a lot of folks are examining it and trying to work through the workflow of how they're going to have to reconfigure their databases to support it. Um, so I would expect a more uptick in adoption sometime in 2015. All right, so let me. We have about forty seconds here before we're going to take a break, but I need to ask you this: um, mm-hmm. Is this something we should? Uh, as an, I'm an author of mm-hmm. several books. Um, in fact, when we come back, I'm telling everyone about a new book that is breaking this week. So we have special gifts for all of you. But that the the other thing is that do we? Um, how do we apply for them? And and should I? Should I, you know, mm-hmm. do I go, do I go to my identifiers? Do I go to Bowker.com? Where where do I go? And where do I put it? Right. Um, okay. First, you go to um, myidentifiers.com, and okay. there's a, a, a link there you can click. It opens up an email. Um, you send an inquiry to the agency, and they will send you a response with an application form. You fill that out. Um, you get your ISNI assigned, and then um, you can put it on your website. You can embed it in your ebook file. There's one publisher that's, that's using it um, that way. Um, there's an ebook platform that's uh, testing it just to see what they can do with it. That's the stage we're at right now. So um, okay. it's worth having. So, yeah. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to go do that. We're going to come right back, and I have a big magic question, and she's going to answer it. What's the cost? This is Author You. I'm <laughs> Judith Bryles, and you're listening to your guide to book publishing. My guest is Laura Dawson, and we're talking ISBN land. We'll be right back. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Is there a book in you? Or another, Author You will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being good. If you already have a book out, You'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. 
Through AuthorU's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, AuthorU is for you. If you're a hobbyist or a casual author, it's not. Join AuthorU today through its website at AuthorU.org. Follow AuthorU on Twitter at AuthorU and on Facebook at AuthorU, where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily. AuthorU, where the author goes to become seriously successful. Every picture tells a story. And it's a truism that people do judge a book by its cover. Nick Selinger and NZ Graphics have been in the business of producing superior graphic cover design and interior layout for self-published authors, independent and traditional publishers for years. He has developed a reputation for excellent work, fast turnarounds, and best of all, affordable pricing. NZ Graphics also produces e-books and book marketing materials such as posters, sell sheets, postcards, bookmarks, business cards, logos, and more. Books designed for his clients have won multiple book awards including Best Book Award by U.S. Book News, multiple Evie Awards from the Colorado Independent Publishers Association, Indie Book Awards, the San Francisco Book Festival Award, and Freedom Medal Award from Valley Forge. Visit www.nzgraphics.com or call 303-985-4174 for more details about making your book the success it should be. Mention that you are an FOJ, friend of Judith's, and that you heard about NZ Graphics on your guide to book publishing. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, If you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, I left you hanging with what's the cost of this new magic thing because I know Laura who is a product manager and a consultant to Bowker and knows everything about the my identifiers and whole everything in ISBN land and beyond. Um, when I first got, this is a confession, when I first got my bank of 100, so this is how long ago is, Laura, they were free. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. They're, no lo- they're no longer free. They're no longer free. No. Um, and that what's the, what is the, the ISNI? Are they free or are they a fee? Uh, there is a small fee. It's $25. So it's a lot okay. less expensive than an ISBN. Um, it is a number that is good for, you know, your lifetime and beyond. Um, it, uh, you know, again, unambiguously identifies you and, um, you know, it's, it's priced very low because we're, at a new stage of adoption. So um, $25 is, is what it costs to get an individual ISNI. And, and the thing is, for, for the um, ISNI, is that it's a one-time shot. You're not going to be buying a bank of them. You just It's one time. And correct. You just have, is that exactly. correct? All right. All right. So I yeah. think it, se- it se- seems to me um, that it makes sense to go ahead and buy it. So I guess I'll do mine okay. <laughs> tomorrow. And <laughs> And go get it and take it um, for it. And so it has variations of your name. Can you put in variations or how, um, how yes, do we handle that? Yes, that's encouraged. Um, there's an application and you fill it out. The more information you can provide, the better. Um, and then we send that into the assignment agency, um, the international assignment agency, which is located in the Netherlands. Um, and huh? they, uh, they do the data entry and the matching um, against what's already in the database and return the ISNI. So it's not an instantaneous process like purchasing and you know a, a, a bank of ISBNs. It's, mm-hmm. it's not that transactional. There's 
sometimes they like to do a little bit of research. They like to, you know, fill out the profile a little more thoroughly. Um, so it, it's a process. It's not like an immediate transaction. All right. So it's up and coming. This is an author alert. You might as well do it because it's it's there. And usually what Bowker starts, they seem to continue with. Would that be safe to say? Oh, yeah. <laughs> OK. All right. So uh, good news. And so does this make sense? Should we put this on our copyright page as well for our um, book? There's, yeah, there's no reason why not. Um, right now, Library of Congress doesn't require it, but um, uh, I would expect that they uh, we'll be looking at it for the CIP process. All right. So good information. Excellent. I love new information. That makes so much more fun. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about some of the other tools that uh, Bowker has in their their uh, kit bar. Um, mm -hmm. I, I've always, I, I will tell you that rarely do I tell, in fact, I, I've never tell them to pull down their barcodes because they're designing their books and a lot of times pricing does change in the process. So just to go ahead and a lot of book designers actually include just I'll throw, I'm, you know, I'm doing your barcode and we're not charging you. But mm -hmm. you you do offer barcodes um, from mm -hmm. the site. Is that not correct? We, we do. Yeah, we, we have a um, we have a partnership with another company and they're the ones who actually create the barcodes. So what if you need to change it? Do you have to pay a new fee all over again? Um, if if the barcode changes, yeah, unfortunately, because it's an image, yeah, um, then then the look of the image is going to change the you know the, yes. the thickness yes. of the lines. So uh, um, you know the work has to be done all over again. All right. So for our listeners, you don't get a barcode. Um, pay for a barcode unless you're going to you're ready to use it. Otherwise, you Correct. you need to, you need to wait till the last minute here. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You, exactly. Yeah. You, just to yeah. make absolutely sure. It, it, correct. And of, and of course, it's, it's worth noting that if you're publishing an ebook, no barcode is required. Um, we do get that question from time to time. So do remember that, everyone. So if you're just doing if you're just doing e format, you, this is not an issue for you. But for the print world, it's smart to do it. Um, I mean, you should do it. And actually, this is one of the separations that you can tell a book whether it's self vanity published versus some of the, um, you know, uh, not traditional, traditional always have a barcode, but that you go over and it, it really does show you that you're entering into the wide, wide world of, Hey, I'm here and I'm serious. And, and then let me ask you this on the barcodes, because some of them are kind of, Oh, I call them fat ass, but they're big. They're they're a good <laughs> yeah. solid inch. Are you doing the truncated ones at all? Which means for listeners, it's smaller. You can get them into the half inch arena. Uh, yeah, uh, I I do not believe we are. Um, I think the company we work with um, works with the retailers, and retailers require a larger barcode for easy scanning. Um, no book designer has ever met a barcode that they like. So there's it's it's understood that it does interfere with the design of the book of of the book cover, but um, unfortunately retailers do require it, and if it's not on a book, chances are they'll require you to put a sticker on it. Yeah, and that makes it even more ugly. So what we're, what Laura's yeah, talking exactly. about, we're <laughs> yeah right, we're we're talking about real estate. It does take up some real estate. But um, our experience is that, it, that, number one, it has to be, it has to look professionally done. It has to really put it all together. And um, it has to be uh, uh, in some standard. Now, we are, we are finding that the, the truncated ones, there's no problem because they're clearly rigged. They, they've got all the coding, the numbers, and everything else. And one of the things that, that you might want to consider putting on your barcode, because sometimes they put them at the very top of a book, your categories, if you're planning on going into a bookstore of some sort, you want to have a category, whether it's business or, uh, you know, historical nonfiction, fill in the blank, um, that you can actually put those words within the barcode. Um, and it, and it, you know, your barcode's going to be white with all the black uh, um, vertical markings that you can put these words right on top, press the price of the book, and you can, you know, kill a lot of birds with one stone, which I think is a good idea. All right, so yeah. what about some of the other goodies? What's a, what's an EAN barcode? We talked about that, but what about SAN? What about a QR code? What about those things? Mm -hmm. And I didn't know you all offered QR codes. Oh, yeah, we do. We do. Um, well, uh, and 
An FAN is a standard address number, um, and chances are most um, small publishers and self-publishers will not need to use this. It's for the um, the larger publishers who are sending um, invoices uh, through a particular protocol to retailers and distributors, mm -hmm. um, and, and it, it basically tells um, trading partners where to send the check. <laughs> um, oh, it's very you know, important. <laughs> very important. Yes. <laughs> It is. Um, it's, it's used uh, for companies that have a lot of different locations, and so the payments may get routed to the wrong location. By identifying the address with a number, um, uh -huh. it, it works a lot like the ISBN does. It says, um, you know, this address is not the same as this other address, and you got to send the check to, to this one. Uh-huh. All right, so it's that kind of information. So most of us who are listening in are going to be not worrying about this one. Right, what, exactly. Uh, Okay, and then the QR codes, um, there's a, a lot of different ways to make them or not. Is there, um, I, I've heard it, and I don't know if it's scuttlebutt, I don't know if it's rumor, I don't know if it's urban legend, really. Mm -hmm. But but is there, uh, and what it is, is that if you go to an XYZ, and I don't even know the names, but they, they're inferior, they could be, uh, uh, they, they could be corrupted of some sort. Uh, the, right, these right, QR right. codes. So, can you help us out there? Sure. Yeah. Um, the QR code is that weird-looking kind of square that you see sometimes on advertisements, uh -huh. and you you point your phone at it, you scan it, and it takes you to a, a website um, with more information about that product. Um, and there's a lot of information crammed into a QR code. If you look at them, there's you know um, there's just it's a sort of complicated little illustration. Um, and, and it has to scan correctly. So it's worth your while to invest um, and make sure that the QR code that you're having generated um, actually functions as designed and points people to the correct website. Um, so if, you're, if you are um, setting up a website about your book or about your business or you know, something related to the publication um, and you want to provide people with more information or enhanced um, features or uh, videos or whatever, um, you put a, a bar um, sorry, a QR code on your book um, and customers can scan it and go to that website and, and get the additional information that you're providing them. Mm -hmm. So this could be on the back cover. If you have a mm -hmm. dust jacket or an interior flap, you could put it on the interior if you want. And I know that Correct. some authors also put them in, in on the interiors. To, to direct their readers to go do something. It could be an activity or an action or more information. Right. Yeah. Right, do you right, right. Or if, you, if you're having um, marketing collateral printed up, mm -hmm. um, you can put the QR code on that too. Mm -hmm. Now, I, have you got any feedback on the success of using QR codes? Is there, is there a huge buy-in or is the, is the jury still out? Um, it, it really depends on um, the content that's being offered and uh, whether or not um, the customer is incentivized to, you know, go to the trouble to call up the app on their phone and do the scanning and, and go to the site. So mm -hmm. um, it, it helps to give customers an idea of what they're going to see if they go to the trouble of clicking through. Mm -hmm. You know, I just just as an idea, here's a marketing idea for our listeners, that when I launched Author U last year, Author U, Creating and Building Your Author and Book Platforms, I actually put a, I had a label made that, you know, the uh, a transparent one that I put right on the front of the book that I gave out during that time that had a QR code that actually went to a video with me talking to the reader. Um, and giving them some ideas of what they knew, kind of a you know the uh, the 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 book shepherd's cosmic goose, so to speak, and and we did that, and that was kind of fun. It, you know, it was not a permanent thing to do. I guess maybe we could do that. I'll think about that because we're we're getting ready to go back to print on that book, and it just did win book of the year, which I'm very excited about for writing from uh, Forward Magazine's big indie fab uh, competition. So. Uh, but that's an idea that you might want to think about. You can make, you know, li literally, we peeled them off like labels. We printed them off, peeled them off by labels, and then we put yep. it in for a special promotional. So that's an idea to do. What's the cost of QR codes with you? 
Because uh, you know, let's see. Um, I believe it is. I want to say. Hold on, I'll call it up right now. Um, call it. Oh, the magic, the magic internet. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. $25. All right. So $25. And this is one that you'll lock in and use wherever you want. Or exactly. They're, they're, you know, and you, you've got to recognize for all of us that sometimes if you get it free, as I said earlier on, there could be some corruption stuff. So make sure it really works. And whatever you do with any of these things, barcodes, uh, you need to have someone test it out. Um, yeah, you know, QA is it is solid? Critical. Yeah, QA it and also with these QR codes. All right, we're going to be right back. Laura Dawson is my guest. And we're talking about all kind of essentials that you need as you get ready to do the full board printing, however you're printing, making your book available. I'm Judith Bryles. It's all for you, your guide to book publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Since 1987, Color House Graphics has set the standard for quality book production. Whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run, depend on Color House to help you. You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing with Judith Bryles, we will provide you a discount on the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. When Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972, they believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing questions. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Oh, I'm very excited as the uh, it, we often do at the bottom of the hour that we will have one of our sponsors. And although I don't have the person that who, who will be coming on next week with us, she's been a guest, but I'm thrilled to say we have a brand new sponsor joining off of you, your guide to book publishing, and it's 1106 Design for self-publishers and publishers. 1106 is located in Phoenix, Arizona. They provide cover design, book design, ebook design, ebook covers, page layout, editing, proofreading, marketing, you name it. If it's with a book, they do it and they do it extraordinarily well. Michelle DeFlippo is the visionary and she and her team would love to work with you and your book. You can find them at 
www.thepublishingatsea.com. And I'm excited because in another week, we will have the publishingatsea.com website up. And Michelle will be one of our special guests along with my other Chicks at Sea They're doing an incredible program over seven days navigating the publishing on high seas. So we're going to have a great, great time. All right. With us is Laura Dawson. We're talking really some essentials, really key essentials. It's a lot of things the last minute that people from ISBNs. I love it when I learn something new called the ISNI, and I'm going to get mine after the show is over (laughs) um, and go get that. But let's talk about some of the other tools now. Um, And let's get into my identifiers, Laura, and what it Mm -hmm. does. And and it's really, I think it's kind of a godsend because the Bowker site used to be kind of uh, formidable sometimes when, when, uh, you know, (laughs) naive author publishers were trying to go in and find the, the magic ISBN. So help us out. What's, what's my identifiers all about? How should we use it? When should we use it? Et cetera. Um, Great. Well, uh, I'm happy to talk about this. Um, My Identifiers uh, is a platform for publishers um, of all sizes, large and small, uh, to come and get services to um, help publish books. Um, We do um, specifically market to um, author publishers. So we have uh, self-publishing packages, um, which involve... um, (coughs) A pack of ISBNs, ten pack of ISBNs, um, a an ebook creation and and distribution, um, barcodes for the print book. Um, we also include um, QR codes in some of these packages. Um, there's a book as an Android app in one of them. Um, a view inside widget, uh, which you can embed in emails and other um, you know marketing, so that people can uh, read a sample of the book just like they do on Amazon. Um, so we, we offer that for self-publishers. Um, we do have um, specific ebook conversion um, packages as well. So if you're writing something that is highly complex, uh, we, can, we can help you out with that. If you're writing something that's very straightforward, uh, then we can, we can help you with that too. So if you've, you know, if you've got a book with lots of illustrations or a cookbook that's very heavily formatted, um, we partner with Digital Conversion Labs, uh, and they do the complex ebook conversions. Um, and we also partner with Book, V-O-O-K. Um, they do the, the more straightforward ones for us. And, and so what are the ranges? What, what kind of prices that we are looking for on those? I know uh, last week we did a great show with Nick uh, Taylor, who really is a pro in ebook land. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, I would encourage all our listeners, if ebooks are in your future, which they should be, um, I will, you know, I'm going to, I will be totally upfront. I'm not an ebook girl. I'm a print girl. I've always, uh, you know, I've always been that. And I know I'm getting ready to have a vacation. Oh my gosh, I can hardly wait uh, next <laughs> month. And I have two books that I have been, you know, I, I kind of salivate when I look at the covers and I touch the paper because I can hardly wait to just kind of go away and do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so, anyway, all right. Um, so, well, what kind of cost for e- ebook creation? Um, the prices range. It depends on the length, uh, the images, um, any links within the book, um, the formatting of the book. So, it can range from one hundred and thirty nine dollars, which is like you know a novel, basically something mm-hmm. uh, not very complicated, um, and it can go up. To to uh, $430 um, for something that's a little more, you know, complex, a little more involved. Um, or if it's, if it's highly complex, you know, um, then they have to look at it and then they will get back to you with a quote. Why don't we, t- why don't we talk about um, highly complex? And I'm going to tell everyone $139 is a very good price um, for someone who is just sit- sitting with just a straight fiction. Text, 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 text. There's no big deal, and it's just going to flow through. That's a that mm-hmm. that's a that's a keeper price. Um, and four hundred could be a very reasonable price, but I need to understand what that complexity is. Can you share that with us, Laura? Um, sure. So, um, if you have drop caps, for example, that are starting, um, you know, chapters. Mm-hmm. Um, if you've got styled lists and inline styling, um, you know, that adds complexity. If your table of contents needs to be um, custom formatted, 
Uh, again, that's another layer of complexity. If there are mathematical formulas, um, then we've got to look at math ML, and that's, you know, that's something outside the normal range of conversion. Mm -hmm. uh, columns, sidebars, um, that type of thing. Um, linked sources within the book um, is also an issue. Um, if the source file is uh, needs all of these things, but it's in Word, so it has to be then, you know, laid out in InDesign and then converted to HTML. Then, you know, um, that can that can be an issue as well. Um, if it's a fixed format versus reflowable, reflowable is easier. Um, fixed format is where you're saying the book has to look like this. Um, these words have to be on these pages. Um, that adds a layer of complexity as well. So. Mm -hmm. um, those are the types of things that can bump up the price of, of a conversion. Laurel, I, I have a question on the fixed side. I actually have a fixed book because of the way my author you book is laid out, which you're, you you kind of land in i you know in the in the i store the iBook store. Mm -hmm. Is there is there any way that's going to transition into all the other stores so you're not kind of lost there? Do you know anything about that? Um, fixed format books in other yeah. bookstores. You mean? Mm -hmm. um, I do know that Amazon supports it. Um, of course, they have their own fixed format. <laughs> um, it's not going to be EPUB. But, um, yeah, I, Barnes & Noble and Kobo are more, um, they're, they're kinder towards reflowable text than they are towards fixed format, definitely. Well, yeah, I think that's a good word. They're all kinder. <laughs> they're, they're all kinder. So I think that for our listeners, if you do have a fixed book, this probably is a good time to have a discussion with the person who designed it or someone who's an expert in the field to see, you know, how can you translate it into other formats? So Laura has used the word Kobo. I mentioned it earlier. If, if your book has uh, international legs that can root into it, that you oh, need yeah. to know, uh, you, a Kobo is essential. It's essential mm -hmm. for you to be up on that format. Um, and which, you know, Laura, I don't know if you know a lot about the, the new baby that birthed uh, just recently, like a few days ago, or the, um, uh, the Kindle Unlimited that they mm -hmm. came oh, up yeah. with. <laughs> All right. So and just jumping into that, but one of the, I, I have a blog that I put out on Monday. I've got another one coming out on uh on Friday on my the bookshepherd.com site but I would encourage everyone to read there's a couple of uh, other blogs that are out there one would be uh, David Geigen's blog on it and the and as well as I would go over to Smashwords and read Mark Coker's uh, blog that he popped out here over the weekend and that he in, initially thought it was really kind of a great idea until he got to the clause that says you must be exclusive on uh, offer it exclusively on Amazon so that means you're, you're going to pull if you're on Kobo or any uh, bnn.com or any of the other platforms you have to yank it you know and I'm I don't understand why they have to they're going down that route I think it's a mistake if they're they're going for market dominance um, the, what they're trying to do is set up um, exclusivity so that um, authors have and a lot of a lot of author publishers do have incredible loyalty to Amazon because, um, you know, that's where most of their sales come from, and the bulk of those sales, um, you know, it's they're making a pretty good living. So um, that kind of loyalty is is you know Amazon is is sort of rewarding it in a way, um, but they're also punishing um, shoppers who like to shop with these other. Um, on these other platforms, mm -hmm. um, it's 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 about market dominance. That's what it's you know. Amazon can say, well, we have the most you know self-published titles in our database, and um, the other retailers just can't compete. And that's you know that's what it boils down to. And th and that is what it boils down to. Um, but I you know I just I don't think they need to really do that. They're still going to be dominant, certainly in North America. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I agree, and, uh, but. They're, um, you know, it's it's not a very nice thing to do. It's to uh, truncate the earnings of the authors who are loyal to you. Yep. Okay. I'll I'll go along with that. Don't agree. To, I don't <laughs> agree. I mean, my my attitude is about if someone wants me to be exclusive, I'm okay on that. But I have to have a buku reward out of it. Yep. Um, exactly. And it's it, 
you know, as, as, as a speaker, when I was on the platform for over 30 years speaking all over the world, and some people literally would pay me not to speak to other groups with, with uh -huh. the work I did. They would actually pay me to stay off other people's platforms because they didn't want that. And you know what? That was okay if I supported their tune. You know, <laughs> I had to exactly. support them. Yes. But that's okay. Yeah. All right, so we have that. We got we got a couple minutes before we have our 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 final break already. My goodness! All right, so let's talk about and I threw that in because I wanted to talk about the unlimited just a little bit because that is the new player in town. So yep. what about you've got some um, you've got a you've got kind of a nifty widget that the, the view inside the widget. Tell us about that. Um, that is functionality that's similar to the look inside the book. Um, functionality on Amazon or, um, you know, there's pretty much every ebook retailer um, has that uh, where customers can click on it and read a sample of it, see what the book actually looks like on, um, in the interior. So uh, the widget is, is that functionality. Um, and so it's, it's your book cover um, plus some sample pages, as many as you, you choose. Um, mm -hmm. And then, uh, you can embed that in marketing emails, uh, on a website. Uh, you can supply it to retailers for their use. Um, so it's, it's, oh, I, it's really I love a nice this. marketing tool. I love this idea. And what's that cost? Um, see, that one is, um, it's a subscription. So uh, it's $120. Um, and then you have to renew it for, you know, every year. So that's an annual subscription. You have a special widget. You design what it looks like, and you can use it anywhere and everywhere, um, mm -hmm. and it goes out. All right, good idea. All right, we're going to be right back. Uh, Laura Dawson is with us, and she is the product one of the product managers for Bowker and, and uh, MyIdentifiers.com, and it's uh, you need to know, everyone needs to know about these services. All right, I'm Judith Browse. I'll offer you your guide to book publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd if you want to create a book with no regrets. Give her a call today, 303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207 or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from one to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based eBooks, and bookstore. 
Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Right, I need to be corrected. Laura is not the product manager for my identifiers, but she is the self publishers. Uh, dot com and and she does work closely with my identifiers and, and <laughs> yes, dot com. So let's yes. and you know what? Here's here's what you all need to understand. Everyone is married to everybody. They're like cousins. Oh, exactly. You know? <laughs> just, we're all cousins out here and figuring yeah, out and what they do um, in that. So let's talk about. I, I think it's a good idea. Um, let's get into this, this last these last few minutes we have with each other. The whole self-publishing. When I think Laura of self-publishing, and and I and I and I, my listeners have heard me say this before. I I am a former New York snob. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> a, a, Eighteen of my thirty-one books were published with New York houses. I believe that okay. only, only, see my nose in the air. Only legitimate authors published with New York, and of course that's just hogwash today. Just ho- mm-hmm. total hogwash. But what it did do uh, for me is because I was brought up that way, that my expectations of what a book looks like, feels like, how it's designed, laid out, should have New York quality to it. And I've always felt mm-hmm. that. There's a lot of self-published books that look like crap out here. Yeah. And, yes. and, and, of course, with the Internet and the a, a lot of the models that we can use, it's helped perpetuate a lot of that. So how and, so, and when I think of self-publish, of course, the, the, all the vanity presses come up, um, the oh, place yeah. where, you know, you give us your couple hundred bucks and we'll publish your book and, you know, and and God be with you, so to speak. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, Okay, and then there it goes versus, wait a minute, this is a business, because I view publishing as a business. That's the first thing I teach mm-hmm. my authors. This is a business. You need to understand that once you're done writing, you're done writing. You are now the CMO, the chief marketing officer, and you've got a product, and you have to learn to move it. So that does a big separation from a lot of the self-publishing. You're going after self-publishing, I think, Let me, and you can modify this, but more is that this is a business. And there, are, you have all these components you need to understand. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, the, the thing about self-publishing is that um, the the barriers to entry for bringing a book to the marketplace have dropped to you know almost nothing uh, in in business terms. Um, yes. You. Um, so so yes, in in a way, anyone can do it. Um, and when anyone can do it, everyone will do it. <laughs> Um, it's, the web has enabled this and has made it very, very easy to put, you know, put your story out there for anyone and everyone to read, but you're right. It is a business. It's been a business for, you know, for as long as, as we have had things written down. Um, and, and it has its own quirks, it has its own, Mm -hmm. um, really, you know, bizarre trends, (laughs) um, and, and and so a lot of people coming into the business for the first time, um, you know, it's 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 got an enormous legacy, and it's very helpful to understand where the business has been so that you can effectively participate it as you go forward. Um, and and that's something that a lot of folks coming in um, don't necessarily realize. They um, they feel like oh, publishing is broken. We've got to change it. Um, yeah, it's there's a lot that is wrong with it. Um, but there are reasons why it got to be the way it, it is, and it's helpful if you want to change things for the better. It's helpful to understand what those reasons are before, you know, charging in and, and trying to upend and disrupt. All right, so to separate your, uh, uh, your book from book pollution, <laughs> mm-hmm. put it that way, is what, so what do you have in your bag of tricks? Um, that you offer in the your your self-publishing side. Um, well, 
really, um, selfpublishedauthor.com is an advice website. Um, so okay. It's just, it, it, it offers a lot of advice about production, about design, about, um, you know, paper quality, um, about metadata and identifiers that allow you to present your book um, on a website um, professionally. Um, it offers advice about marketing and how to position yourself as a publisher, not just as an author, but as a publisher. Um, and uh, it offers advice about rights, uh, which is something that a lot of folks don't, don't necessarily think about. But, you know, if you're using an excerpt from another book in your book, you have the right to use that. If you're using certain images for your book cover or, you know, for internal art, you have the right to use that. If you've chosen a font, um, not all fonts. Or in license, so we got to make sure that you know that's taken care of too. And this is these are all functions that the publishing house traditionally has engaged in on behalf of the author. But now, if the author is doing it herself, she's got to be aware of the business side of things. And so, selfpublishedauthor.com helps authors understand the business, understand the environment. Um, it's content that is either written by or, cre or curated. I me, um, and I've been in publishing since 1986, in book publishing since 1986. So um, I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot of transition, um, mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of, of disruption. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and so at Balfour, we're here to help. We're, we're here to sort of ease the way as, as authors are becoming publishing business people. Okay, so I'm actually, as you and I are talking, I am looking at the site. So everyone, I want to tell you, it's self-published, as in past tense, selfpublishedauthor.com. And so, and it's got a very extensive, you know, FAQ. So I would encourage you to play around with that a little bit. And then, Laura, we should talk about giving you some articles for this. This would be very cool. Oh, yes, I would. Uh, I would uh, um, yeah, we, sh we should do that for it. But just a lot of good information. So I would get on that. And you mentioned distribution. And I think that before we exit, because that's always one of the big bugaboo questions, besides mm -hmm. help, help, my book is falling down and I need help with marketing is that you know what's what about distribution on that a lot of people use amazon as their primary distributor which is fine but there mm -hmm. are other options out here so can you give us a little few tidbits sure yeah um there are a number of book distributors um that have been in business for quite a while um working with publishers um publishers can't necessarily they don't have the bandwidth to send their books to all the different retail outlets that are out there. Um, so they work with a distributor. The distributor sets up those relationships on behalf of the publisher, and um, the publisher sends the distributor a bunch of books, and then the distributor farms those out to all of the different retail outlets. And that's so that's the function of a book distributor. Um, for the most part, um, if, if you're an author publisher, um, yes, you're going to send to Amazon, and Amazon is a world unto itself. Um, but there are all these other outlets that you might be missing. So um, we have a partnership with the Association for Publishers for Special Sales, APSS, um, and there are a lot of uh, articles on selfpublishedauthor.com by Brian Judd. Um, he's an expert in directing sales to non-traditional outlets. Um, so if you've written a book on, um, you know, some function of human resources, for example, uh, because you are an expert in that field, um, it's worthwhile talking to human resource associations, talking to uh, various corporations, um, offering your book as a premium to them, um, as, a, as a, you know, offering a workshop and then selling your book at the end of the workshop. Um, so there's, there's lots of different creative ways that you, that you can set up distribution channels. Um, and Brian is an expert in, in all of these non-traditional Sales channels. Yeah, we Brian is on our advisory board for Author You, and that oh, and, yeah, we've had him do a few of our uh, well, a few webinars. We have done a few workshops and um, and the like. So it's the thing is though, you you all need to do. There's not a magic button that says, oh, I'll no, just send it there and I'll pick it up. It's a lot of work and follow up. 
you know, what, what you can do. Okay, so, for example, you may have a book that's ideal for the military community. Ideal for military community. Mm-hmm. You got to work it, get into it, deep dive into it, connect with it, and market to it. So, but they're all yeah. out there. They are absolutely yep. all out there. So that sounds terrific. All right. So let's let's talk about any other. We've got just a couple of minutes here. What about rights clearance? Um, what can, um, can you enlighten us? Anything new in the rights clearance arena? Because people are confused about that. I think a lot. Oh, absolutely. And rights are confusing. Um, so um, really, we first. It's important to understand that once you have written your book, it is automatically copyrighted, and and. You don't necessarily have to pack it up and send it to Library of Congress and put it on deposit. Um, it's, it's an automatic thing that happens at the point of creation of the book. So, um, and, and that's you know true of your book. It's true of all books. Um, if you are working with other people's work, like images or um, other text or what have you, um, it's, it's very important to make sure that you have the right to use that content. So. Um, we work with a company called DigiRights, and they have um, a rights clearance um, dashboard. Um, you put in what you are using, and they check and see if the rights are available, and um, if they're, you know, if it's if it's fair use, if it's not fair use, they'll vet all of that for you. Which would be good to understand yeah. and do that because it's it's just really you don't critical. want to get caught. You know, in, yeah. a, in a right situation, um, because that can get very expensive. No question about it. Well, I, we, we have just a little bit over a minute left, so I always like to ask this question. What do you wish authors would ask you when they're setting things up or doing things or their post book that they just don't ask? Um, well, for, for this particular... Um, this particular group, it's difficult because they're all different. It's not a, you know, it's not a homogenous market at all. Um, but really, I think um, the the thing to ask is, uh, what what can I be doing to, to make the process, you know, to, to make my presentation more professional? Um, and the more professional you can handle yourself, the more seriously you'll be taken by this very entrenched, very old, very legacy industry. And there you go. So, hey, you know, I'm going to tell people that, first of all, we want to thank Laura Dawson for being with us and that encourage everyone to go to selfpublishedauthor.com to get over to my identifiers, and that's plural, dot com and see what they have to offer um, with that. But you're competing with the big boys. It, 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 it's certainly a much lower scale, but you're still competing. It's got to look like, feel mm-hmm. like, etc. And remember that. All right, as we wrap up, Snappy Sassy Salty officially launches this week. If you want to take advantage of the fabulous free gifts I've designed just for the author and writer, go to SnappySassySalty.com. Get your book. Come back. Put the confirmation number in and unload everything. It's very cool. Look forward to hearing your feedback. I know you're going to love it. I had so much fun writing it. It's a beautiful gift book just for authors and writers. Laura, thank you for being with us, and we want to have Absolutely. you back again. Absolutely, my pleasure. All right. This Great. is Judith Bryles. Thank you. It's Author You. You're welcome. It's Author You, your guide to book publishing. You all have a fantastic week. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Each week, a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take you, the author, to the next level. You'll learn tips and secrets on how to create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve book publishing success by making one very simple change in your book's journey. How to avoid the publishing predators. How to create an author and book platform that rocks. Learn how to make a living with your words and your books. Learn how to publish a book that has no regrets and so much more. For more information, check out AuthorU.org, where authors who want to be seriously successful go. And Judith's website, TheBookShepherd.com. Then join us again here next week for more. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Brought to you by Author You and the Book Shepherd. Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, 